Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 This video lecture is based on communication and interaction and the special focus of this lecture will be on the principles of communication. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi. The academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Dr Savita Kaushal from Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education Government of India Hello my dear students I am Dr Iram Khan assistant professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education Faculty of Education Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi Today we will be discussing about communication and interaction and in this lecture the topic will be focused on the principles of communication let us start the discussion first with the objectives so the objectives of this session are to discuss the different principles of communication and to elaborate the principles of communication in detail first of all let us recall what exactly we mean by communication we have already discussed that communication means transferring thoughts information ideas emotions through gesture or voice or symbols signs and expressions from one person to another there are three major things or most important things which are essential in any type of communication or in the process of any uh, form of communication what are these three they are the sender the receiver and the channel or we can also call it uh, as the medium channel or medium so the sender is the encoding uh, entity of the message so basically the sender encodes the message in any form like a voice or in a written form or in any of the sign forms so they are often called as the encoders so these senders can be explained or can be uh, said uh, as the encoders the next one is the receiver the receiver basically decodes so the receiver is decoding the message from the sender to understand the message so these uh, receivers are often called as decoders now the what is the third component any message or information needs some channel or a medium for transaction so that particular medium is the third component for example let us take the example of a television program uh, where there is audio and visual both both form of uh, communication happening so here the audio visual medium is basically decoded and the electronic signals are basically uh, transformed into the audio visual uh, forms and those audio visual forms which are earlier in the form of electronic signals are now received by the audiences so this is somehow like uh, the uh, recapitulation of what exactly we studied about the communication now in this session we will be discussing about the various principles of communication so let us uh, see that what exactly these principles are all about and what exactly are their role in the in uh, transforming various communications or in the form of uh, the creators of various communications so the principles of communication uh, when we discuss about these principles communication can be considered as a two way channel which requires certain basic principles and these basic principles are essential to be observed 
for the effective outcomes or for an effective communication. So in this session, we will be focusing on these principles of communication one by one. The first principle of communication, which I will be discussing, is the principle of readiness and motivation. What exactly it means? Both the communicator and the receiver, it means the sender and the receiver should be ready and remain motivated throughout the process of communication. If there is lack of interest or enthusiasm or a sort of readiness on the part of either of them, either the sender or the receiver, this is going to adversely affect the process and the products of communication. That is why this is taken up as the first principle of communication and this is what its readiness and motivation. The second principle is the principle of competency and worth. What is competency and worth? When the communicator and the receiver, both of them, basically they should be quite competent and efficient in terms of communicating and also in terms of receiving the desired information or message. What does it mean? Like somebody is saying, like a teacher is communicating something and if the student is not ready or the student is not competent enough to get the, uh, the lecture or the, uh, the, the topic which the teacher is communicating, then there is no any meaning of that communication. That topic is going to get to lose its worth. It's worth. So basically, it is very much uh, important that the competency should be in the uh, communicator as well in the receiver. So there is a great need of development of the required communication skills so that the task of communication in terms of transmission and receiving may be performed by both the entities in an effective and uh, proficient way and then only it is possible to, to make a proper communication in a best possible way. So we can say that uh, a source of communication, uh, when the source of communication or the communicator is a teacher, this teacher should be imbibed with sufficient knowledge, which should be coupled with skills and application uh, components or related to that topic which is to be transacted. Then only this teacher or the communicator will be in a position to go for a very kind of flow of communication which is going to be received by the receiver. In this case the receiver will be the student. So in this way there will be a fluid communication happening between the teacher and the student or the communicator and the receiver. And this is something which is uh, naturally and uh, you can say uh, very, very swiftly happening. So that is why we can say that this principle which says that uh, competency and worth is something which should be there can be considered a very important principle of communication. The next principle is the principle of sharing and interaction. Like what exactly we mean by sharing? Or interaction when we are sharing our thoughts what we are doing we are doing some sort of interaction so since the communication is a two-way process its success lies in allowing as much sharing of the ideas and keeping some sort of mutual interaction between the source of the communication in this case we can take the example of a teacher and the receiver which here in this case can be a student. So if there will be a two-way interaction happening, then we can say that the, uh, the entire communication will be considered as a very successful com communication. So this, is, uh, this can be said that greater the interaction, more will be the involvement and participation of the students in the teaching learning process and it will definitely bring positive results to the process of communication. So that's why it is always suggested for a teacher to make the class lively where 
not only the teacher is speaking and speaking and speaking the student should also uh, in a position to speak up to cross question to interact with the school with the uh, with other students or maybe the teacher so uh, so that the process of entire uh, teaching learning is going to become a, a kind of uh, a knowledge uh, uh, extracting process where people are sharing their thoughts and interactions are happening so that is why this principle of sharing and interaction is considered again to be a very important principle the next principle is the principle of timeliness see timeliness or uh, punctuality is something which is important in every walk of life but here this principle states that communication should be done at proper time so that it helps in implementing the plans if we delay the communication then the purpose will be defeated the purpose sole purpose of that com particular communication will be defeated and then uh, if it is done at uh, the point when uh, when that particular time has gone when it was very much required then it will just become mere, uh, mere uh, you can say a, a point which can be discussed in the history or it will have some historical importance but it, it will not be making any change in the present of the entity so that is why it is very important to make the communication at the proper and uh, appropriate time when it is desired so that is why this principle is uh, taken up here and this is the principle of timeliness the next principle is the principle of suitability of the communication contents we all know that content is very important in any of the communications and what is to be communicated in a communication process should be very much appropriated or you can say it, it should be decided on the part of both the communicator and also on the part of the receiver so the communicator in this case if the communicator is a teacher must be able to handle the communication contents for being transferred to the receiver which in this case is the student and the student should also be ready the readiness should be there to accept that content it should not be beyond their heads like uh, the difficulty level of the content which is being transacted should be according to the previous knowledge which this child or the student is having so in this way uh, at the receiving end the communicated material should be suitable enough for being grasped and responded so we always have to take care of the uh, what exactly is the previous knowledge level of our students when we start a lesson or a discussion we have to check we have to make a kind of assessment a prognostic assessment that at what level our students are and then only we have to start transacting our topic so that there should not be any communication gap or any uh, type of information loss because uh, there is a possibility that if we are starting it some somehow at a difficulty level which is not attained by the students then the entire process is going to lose its worth the worth is lost because the students will not internalize what the teacher is basically trying to say so the communicated material should have a definite purpose there should be a cohesiveness and appropriations in the light of the objectives which are set in the beginning itself and the situation which is prevailed at the time of communication so we have to take care of that what exactly is the uh, is the scenario at and what what are the objectives which we are uh, keeping in mind when we are starting transaction so all these things are to be taken care of and that is why this principle of suitability of the communication contents is there and which is considered to be an important principle of communication the next principle is the principle of adequacy it is a little bit similar to the earlier one it says that the information communicated should be adequate and complete in all respects we should not or we should never ever provide incomplete information or inadequate information because inadequate information may delay the action and it can also create confusion and this confusion can be 
the starting point of bigger confusions and bigger mistakes. So inadequate information also affects the efficiency of the receiver. So adequate information is essential for taking proper decisions and making actions or making any type of plans or uh, uh, if we are trying to uh, accomplish some task, whatever planning we are doing, that particular adequacy uh, of information which we are having in hand is very, very much important. Then only we can be in a position to accomplish our plans which we are making at the particular moment. So this is the principle of adequacy. The next principle is the principle of appropriate media and the channel. Both media and channel can be taken up synonymously. So the effectiveness of the process of communication will lie in the appropriateness, quality and the strength of the communication media and also the channel through which we are making the communication. And therefore, it is very much worthy to make use of the verbal or the non-verbal or both the means and media for the efficient and effective flow of communication. We can use any form. We can go for verbal communication, we can go for non-verbal communication, or we can mix uh, both types. Normally, we, we mix the types and we use both the, uh, the channels or both the mediums. And similarly, as far as possible, the use of multimedia, where multiple cells, sense organs are utilized. This use of multimedia should be preferred over the single or restricted use of media and channel of communication for the uh, efficient and fruitful results. So multimedia exactly means that when we are using multiple uh, mediums, when multiple sense organs are involved in the comprehension of the process, the effective communication will be happening if we are using these multiple channels or multiple media. So this one is the principle of appropriate media and channel. The next principle is the principle of attention. In order to make communication effective, the receiver's attention should be drawn towards the message. By message, I mean the content. People are different in behavior. We all know that uh, every human is unique and they all have different attention spans. They all have different levels of emotions, their uh, level of understanding and all sort of things are unique in nature, different in nature. So that is why we cannot uh, go ahead and communicate in a very, um, uh, only one way or uh, in, in a similar uh, manner. Every child is unique and their understanding of uh, level of every child is unique. So, because they are unique, they have got different attention spans and emotions and all. So, they may respond differently to that particular message. Now, when we are, the, uh, we are actually seeing or we are transferring the message, we have to take care of that what is our audience to whom we are transacting? What is the uh, variety of students which we are having? So knowing the student is the most important thing for a teacher. Subordinates should act similarly as per the contents of the message. So when we are planning our class, we have to think of that how we are going to transact this topic so that uh, we can attain the attention of every child and even the last child. So the act of, uh, of a teacher is also to draw the attention of the students and then they may, uh, the students, if they, the, their attention is drawn, then they are going to observe and they are going to follow the instructions and they are also going to receive the communicated message in a proper way. So this is uh, something which actually informs us 
that how this gaining attention is very important and that is why it is always suggested uh, for the student teachers and uh, those who are beginners that if you are starting a class with something which is going to help you out in gaining the attention of your students your half work is done because now the students are ready ready to listen to you or whatever you are going to show you are going to demonstrate they are ready to uh, to actually observe all those things so this is something where uh, we have to work a lot every pupil teacher every every student teacher has to work a lot uh, because at gaining attention is something which is very important and that is why this principle of attention is uh, considered to be an important principle of communication the next is the principle of informality we all know that formal communication is generally used for transmitting messages and other information and sometimes the formal communication may not achieve the desired results then comes this informal communication which provides effective and some somehow uh, the the proper communication which is desired at that particular time so informal communication may prove effective in such situations where the formal communication may not work management of uh, you like if you are using such type of informal communications for assessing the reaction of your students towards all those topics which you are uh, like which are complicated and which you are trying to communicate is something which is a innate quality which should be an innate quality of a teacher so if you are trying to convey something you are trying to uh, to communicate a typical difficult topic which is difficult for uh, the students to comprehend uh, if you are transacting it in a very formal and conventional way you feel that the comprehension is not happening then you can just uh, at that particular point you can go away with this formal communication and go ahead and use certain examples from your daily life your uh, your the analogies from your own experiences and you can actually try to let them understand that what exactly is this particular topic all about so here the informal communication will help you as a teacher to bring up the comprehension level or to uh, to strengthen your comprehension uh, and the communication will be effectively uh, created in form of the understanding level of the, getting to the understanding level of the students so that is why at times we can go for informal communication to in the classroom so that is why this principle of informality and this can be seen as an optional principle if it is required we can go for so this is one of the principles of communication the next is the principle of appropriate feedback we all know that feedback is very important and uh, the communication basically enjoys its effective flow if it continues to receive the desired feedback from the receiver and vice versa because it is very important even for a teacher to know that whatever she is teaching is being attained by the students and even the students are always in uh, they are they always think of that whether the teacher is feeling that they are in a position to understand the topic or not that is why the assessment this formative assessment and all those things happen uh, throughout the year while the classroom teaching learning process so in the classroom if a teacher gets the desired feedback from the students in terms of the quality of uh, uh, the teaching efforts which this teacher is making in it will definitely boost up the morale and it will it will also give the desired direction to the future or to to the further efforts of the teacher the teacher is going to plan accordingly 
whatever feedback she is receiving according to the feedback she is going to plan she is going to strengthen her knowledge and uh, uh, like uh, use of resources whatever the students demand on the basis of those demands this teacher is going to uh, to equip herself uh, for teaching that particular topic so the feedback is very important for a proper teaching learning process and that is why the principle of appropriate feedback comes in origin now the last principle is the principle of facilitators and barriers of communication we all know that there are many intervening variables which lie between the source and the receiver of communication and the way these variables affect it can be positive or it can be negative or we can say that it can be favorable or adverse it can be favorably acting or adversely act, acting on the functioning of the source and receiver so because of these this functioning of the, of the source and receiver becomes a kind of decisive factor for the success or failure of communication if there are a lot of hindrances a lot of uh, problems transmission loss then it can be a less effective communication it can be a failed communication but if there are all those uh, situations which are very much conducive everything is going on properly and the, the the sender and the receiver both are on the same page then we can say that the communication process is happening in a proper way and therefore it should be arranged like we should arrange our communication process which should be eliminating the barriers of communication as much as possible although there are uh, several barriers uh, which are uh, somehow very uh, like they come in we try to uh, to stow away from those but at times they come in but we just try to make the barriers of communication very much eliminated from the process of communication and uh, because this this particular topic of facilitators and barriers of communication is having a lot of uh, other issues so that is why it will be discussed in a separate session and we will be detailing on these uh, barriers and what exactly they all uh, mean and how they uh, they actually work on the uh, process of communication how the facilitators help the process of communication so all these things will be discussed separately so this was all about the different principles of communication so let us just try to recapitulate what we have studied today we have studied the principles of communication which are followed for making the process of communication effective and successful and these are all uh that is why they all are termed as the principles of communication the notable ones which we have discussed are the principle of readiness and motivation then principle of competency and worth principle of adequacy and principle of sharing and interaction then the principle of suitability of the communication of uh, communication content the principles of uh, timeliness the principle of appropriate media and channel principle of appropriate feedback and the principle of exercising proper control over the facilitators and the barriers of communication so this is all about today we will see each other in another session where we will be detailing more about uh, some of the other aspects of communication till then thank you so much and uh, these are few of those references and suggested links which uh, were used while creation of uh, this particular topic you can also go ahead and study more with the help of these uh, particular suggested links uh, these are helpful if you want to elaborate your study related to communication dear students you were watching a video on communication and interaction and in this lecture we discussed in detail about the principles of communication this video lecture was recorded by faculty at home 
during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India. Welcome dear learners. This is a video for the subject of education, for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Educational Technology Part 2. This video lecture is going to discuss about communication and interaction and in this lecture, we will be focusing on the facilitators and barriers of communication. This lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Professor Jasim Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello, my dear students. I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today, we will be discussing on the topics related to communication and interaction. And this lecture is going to focus on the facilitators and barriers of communication. Let us start the lecture first with the objectives. The objectives of this session are to discuss the various facilitators of communication and to describe the barriers of communication. First of all, we will be discussing that what exactly we mean by the facilitators and the barriers of communication. We all know that the effectiveness of communication very much depends on the presence or absence of the various elements and also the conditions which are facilitating or obstructing the proper flow of communication. In fact, these elements or situations, they very effectively play the role of the uh, intervening variables in helping, either helping or hindering the process of communication by standing between the communicator. In few of the cases, we can say that the teacher is the communicator, which can be the independent variable or the source and the receiver. And in few of the cases, we can take the student as the receiver who is the dependent variable. So in this way, these are always in a position to increase or decrease the effectiveness of the communicator, the strength of the communication media, the power of the receiver and the quality of the communicated message by their typical nature and characteristics, which is either uh, going to make a little bit help in the process of a communication or maybe will be uh, creating some sort of hindrance. 
So in this particular lecture, we will be discussing about that what exactly uh, are those uh, features, the characteristic features of the facilitators of communication and also some of those bar barriers who are very much important uh, and uh, can be taken care of while making a effective uh, while making an effective communication either in a, inside a classroom or anywhere else in the uh, society or uh, on any of those places the workplace or any other place so as a matter of common experience we all are aware that the role of the physical and the psychological factors they are inherent in the environmental situations or the conditions in which the person is the conditions which are prevailing at the time of communication when the communication is taking place so the favorable situations uh, when when we are having a very kind of calm and quiet environment or when there is no any stress in the environment there is no tension tension free mutual interaction is happening there is proper climate and uh, like if if we are uh, having a very hot weather and there is no any uh, kind of um, uh, like air aeration or uh, ventilation that is also something which will be adverse so if we are having proper climate and the weather conditions are also conducive and proper facilities in terms of using the multimedia or the devices which are uh, being used as the media of uh, communication they all collectively play wonders in enhancing the effectiveness of the communication process but on the contrary, if we just see the, uh, the other side, if there are unfavorable conditions or the situations which are uh, at that moment when the communication is happening, they are not according to the, uh, to the needs of that particular scenario, these adverse situations can be very much uh, creating a kind of... Uh, um, obnoxious situation or you can say hindrance in the process of communication what can be uh, these uh, the forms of these hindrances it can be some sort of noise or uh, if there is indiscipline in the class or maybe in the uh, scenario where the communication is being taking place or improper physical facilities non-availability of appropriate aid or material or there, there is a possibility that the material is available, but the person who is, uh, who has to handle the material is not trained enough to use that material. That is also some sort of hindrance. So lack of training, then mutual conflicts and tensions, improper climate and weather. These weather conditions are also very, very important, and we have to take care of that. How we are going to make the, uh, the, the, the situation where the communication is going to, to take place very much friendly. See, all these play or may play havoc by disharmonizing the process. So if there is disequilibrium in any of these, then we can find that these uh, particular situations can be very troublesome for the process of communication. So as a communicator and the receiver or organizer of the program or maybe the classroom or if there is a talk show or any sort of communication activities happening, we must be fully aware of the nature and effect of the facilitators and the barriers of communication. And we all know that the facilitators are the friends or companions of all the factors and things that cater for the effectiveness of communication and these should be therefore provided due encouragement and um, also some sort of uh, incentivization can be done or maybe we can see that how they these are going to be facilitated uh, facilitated properly and one should always try to have provisions for any such type of facilitators and uh, as, as uh, many as possible, we should be taking care of that these facilitators should be there once the communication is taking place. However, on the other hand, we should take care of that the barriers must be taken as the negative 
and determine detrimental force like they can be the game changer they can be something which are is going to uh, to actually tarnish the entire uh, process or whatever we have like uh, the efforts we have made if there are a lot of barriers in the in between the process of communication the entire efforts are going to fail so we have to make a lot of effort to keep them totally away or to reduce their impact on the communication process these barriers may diminish and distort the quality of the signals which are sent to the receiver or you can say that by the like uh, the sender the communicator is sending those uh, codes or signals and the receiver is uh, accepting so they these barriers can be making distortions in the quality of the signals so the connection between the two the communicator and the receiver is going to uh, get less uh, like le less strengthened if there is the intervening of these barriers so we have to always uh, take care of all these things that we shall uh, be identifying the barriers which can come in between and we have to see that how we can avoid or uh, like take them away totally from the process of the communication let us try to just talk out few of those facilitators which are very much helpful for the process of communication so the first can be like we have just discussed calm and quiet environment then proper physical facilities physical facilities can be uh, like if the equipment is properly uh, provided there is uh, like all those situations which are very much required for the proper communication those come under the edges of physical facilities so they all should be very much proper and there should be no any tension or stress so tension free mutual interaction is again one sort of facilitator then proper weather conditions and like uh, we cannot uh, uh, make the weather conditions change but what we can do we can just see that how uh, if there is a lot of uh, uh, like the weather conditions are too harsh then we can make the facilities the physical facilities available which can mellow down the harshness so if there is a, a lot of uh, uh, like the weather is too cold or too hot we can just try to make some sort of facilities available so that the communication process which is happening the communicators and the receivers can sit properly and uh, listen to what exactly is being said and the person who is saying could can also be comfortably communicate then proper facility of using the multimedia this is something which at times becomes the most important facilitator if a person is in a position to handle the equipment the uh, multimedia equipment and also uh, is in a position to manage all those uh, sort of aids which are considered to be uh, the uh, audio or visual aids or maybe the magnification devices then the process becomes automatically very much uh, easier and swift so and and on the other hand if there is any problem in using these material the multimedia and or the uh, aids which are uh, being provided then that provision of that aid also becomes a kind of uh, adverse situation so we have to see that if we are providing some multimedia equipment some devices then we should properly train the person who is being who is going to use that or we should be having some people some some uh technical experts who can help the person out once the help is required so these are all the facilitators uh, which can be helpful in the process of communication now let us come to the barriers and if we talk about the barriers the barriers can be two types they can be of two types they can be the internal barriers or the external barriers so first we will focus on the internal barriers so the roots of the internal barriers of communication lie in the sender and the receiver of the message what can be these let us take uh, one by one uh, like we we can discuss that what exactly these are 
poor physical health or illness if any of the two the either the communicator or the receiver any of the two or uh, the group uh, who is receiving the communication if they are not in a proper state of mind because of the uh, illness or some bad health then the process automatically gets some sort of hindrances so this is the first internal barrier the second one is poor background in terms of previous learning and general knowledge about the subject of communication so when the communication is being made the communicator should always be uh, focusing on that what exactly is the um, the difficulty level of in which she or he is communicating and the comprehension is happening or not whether the previous knowledge related to the present uh, communication is with the audiences or not so if we are communicating a topic we should always be as a teacher we should always be aware of that what is the general understanding of regarding that topic uh, of uh, our learners so in case they don't have the general idea we first have to make them uh, know that what exactly is the general premises and then only we can go for the complicated things so this is uh, something which we have to uh, take care of if the background check is not happened then the entire communication is going to fail so this is the second internal barrier uh, so the poor background in terms of previous learning and general knowledge uh, if it is not checked and without checking the communication has uh, been started then it can be a internal barrier or hindrance in the process of the the communication then the next is the poor mental health and improper psychological makeup like if a person is having some sort of prejudice or the person is not in a mood to listen to non attention or feeling of insecurity or there is some sort of anxiety there is some sort of fearfulness related to anything or the person is in depression or there is some sort of dissatisfaction at both the ends either at the end of the communicator or the end of the community like this uh, uh, receiver then this poor mental health condition can be a very important internal barrier because because, because of the uh, this this particular case of this poor mental health and improper psychological condition the entire crux of the communication is going to fade away so this is also uh, to be taken care of and it is again a very important internal barrier of communication then the next is the handicap in understanding the symbolic expression verbalisms graphical representations etc what exactly it actually mean if we are not prepared enough that whatever are the nitty gritty if we are explaining something to an audience and there are a lot of graphical representations or concept maps or flow charts or maybe there are some sort of uh, um, diagrams and all and as a communicator we are not in a position to explain it properly or if we are explaining but still the audiences the the, the receivers are not in a position to comprehend it then this particular case is going to become the internal barrier in case of uh, getting this communication becoming an effective communication so this handicap in understanding the symbolic expressions verbalisms or uh, graphical representations can be another sort of internal barriers let us come to the external barriers what exactly we mean by the external barriers so the roots of the external barriers of communication lie in the environmental conditions which are prevailing at the time of communication so these these are somehow uh, those circumstances which are external in nature so let us try to see one by one what exactly these uh, uh, communication barriers are the first one is noise and other similar distractors then the polluted environment invisibility invisibility means if, if there is uh, like if uh, there is a big audience and the communicator is uh, 
communicating and she or he is also making some sort of explanations on the blackboard or on the whiteboard and the audiences are not able to see it properly visibility is not that good in that case this in invisibility of uh, that uh, explained material is going to be uh, considered as the external barrier then the next is the environmental and physical discomfort what exactly it means environmental and physical discomfort when we are sitting like suppose we are in a class and we are uh, we have to take this class for a long time or uh, maybe a lecture which is of 50 minutes or one hour long maybe 45 minutes long and the seating arrangement is not very much comfortable we are ha having discomfort or there is uh, like a, a mad rush in the class and we have to share seats at that particular moment the, uh, this physical discomfort in the environment may be one of the examples is the seating arrangement can be the external barrier which is going to distract the person who is receiving the message because the focus is uh, right now shifted to the seating arrangement or to the physical dis discomfort uh, discomfort which this person is feeling so this is also one of the external barriers then the next is the improper functioning of the communication channels involved uh, while the audio visual materials or any sort of equipment which is being used is uh, actually part of the communication so if the suppose the mic is not working uh, or the uh, the uh, speakers are not working in that case what will happen the people like those who are the receivers they will be struggling to listen so the uh, the use of this audio visual material uh, is because we want to uh, to express or we want to send the message in a very proper way but what is happening because of the hindrance because of the uh, disturbance in this uh, mic or in the speakers the receivers are not in a position to uh, to actually uh, listen to uh, the communication so these are also the external barriers improper functioning of the devices then non cooperative or unhealthy rivalries competitions among those who are participating in the process of communication that can also be a very uh, obnoxious activity and can be considered as the external barrier then lack of proper motivation and uh, lack of incentives lack of uh, zeal and enthusiasm which is needed to remain active on the part of the sender and the receiver if all these things are lacking or any of the things are lacking in that case also we can find that the communication is not happening in a proper way and they are considered as the external barrier of communication so let us now recapitulate what we have studied in terms of the uh, facilitators and the barriers of communication we saw that the effectiveness and the success of a process of communication depends on the quality of the role and this role can be either positive or negative played by the elements or components associated with the process of communication and as a communicator receiver or organizer of uh, the process we must be quite conscious about exercising proper control over the facilitators and the barriers of communication and aware we can see that on one hand we must do our best to give proper incentives and encouragement to the facilitators and on the other hand we must try to keep the process of communication free from the negative impacts of the barriers as far as possible so that we can ensure the desired success of that communication which is happening either inside a classroom or in any of the walks of life so we have what we have to do we have to facilitate those things which are helpful and we have to uh, to actually uh, as far as possible make sure that the unwanted conditions or the barriers should not become the uh, the factors which are going to 
to make this process of communication unsuccessful. So this is the key of making a, uh, a proper communication in a very effective manner. So this was all about uh, today, uh, this uh, facilitators and barriers of communication uh, are very important in terms of uh, making the effective communications. So uh, we will be discussing about many other topics related to communication in other sessions. There are a few of those references and the suggested further links, uh, which can be seen for uh, studying more about uh, these facilitators and the barriers. And uh, make sure that you are always using the right type of uh, scenario when you are making a communication in either inside the classroom or maybe outside the classroom in other places. Thank you so much for today. Let us see each other in another session another time. Dear learners, you were watching a video on communication and interaction. And in this particular session, we discussed about the facilitators and barriers of communication. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 using minimal resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional to be ignored. Any queries with regard to this lecture cast, kindly send to tech support at dth.in.